Monte Carlo method. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let me look. All right, it's saying there's four kids going to camp, and there's a 10% chance of one kid getting a disease from a kid there because it's infectious. All right, it's wondering what's the percent chance of three fourths kids coming back to get the disease? So it's going to be around 30%. Or we're going to have to use trials using different things to figure out how to do this. Okay, here we go. Today, we will be teaching you the Monte Carlo method. Three easy steps are used. Step one, determine how the situation will be simulated. <laughs> we give you three examples, which would be roll and die, flipping a coin, and choosing cards. Step two, define what constitutes a single trial and what data will be recorded. And the final step is specify the number of trials that will be run and how the estimated answer will be obtained. Okay. Our first example is with cards. You do 25 trials, four times equals one trial. Diamonds, spades, and clubs is, <laughs> is a win, which means that you have the disease. And if you have a heart, it means that you are a clean kid or you don't have the disease. Three-fourths of the kids with a disease equals... Go. <laughs> Go. Three-fourths of the kids with the disease equals 9 over 25, which also equals 36%. Rules. Okay, for the other... Uh, simulation that we're going to do. We're going to use a coin and we're going to flip it twice. Since we're flipping it twice, that'll give us four different outcomes that we can get. So, we'll take if it gets heads, heads, and the rest are these, then it will be, it gives us a 25% chance. And once we do out the trial, we did it and we got 10 out of 25 came out to have one of these, and that comes out to be 40%. Now, since all of our math is close, but not close enough, the way we would fix this would be to do more trials. So our math would be more relevant in case there's any gaps between each set of data.